Every time I'm out on that race course or whenever it gets tough now, I think about a little Asian girl that was in the same exact shoes that I was in when I was younger, being bullied, not thinking that they had a place in this world, especially in sport. Hopefully I could be a role model and that they can follow in my footsteps one day. This is Quest for the Ironman World Championship, brought to you by Gatorade Endurance, formulated for farther. The very first Ironman took place on the shores of Honolulu in 1978. One year later, Lynn Lamar became the first woman to complete the race, and ever since, there have been so many firsts in the sport that has always strived to be inclusive to people from every walk of life, from every part of the world. And in another first, this storied event will take place outside of Hawaii as the World Championship moves to the U.S. mainland for the 2021 Intermountain Healthcare Ironman World Championship, presented by Utah Sports Commission. No matter where this iconic race is contested, for those like Clarice Chastang, qualifying for the Ironman World Championship represents a commitment to something far greater than a single race day. I grew up in a tiny little town called Mayapak, New York, about an hour or so north of New York City. My mom is full Filipino and my dad is French, so they're actually both immigrants. Clarice Chastang is the only professional Asian American woman on the Iron Man circuit, and she is deeply passionate about bringing more diversity to the sport. What drives her on is the opportunity to inspire young girls. I was very shy. I stuck to myself a lot. Unfortunately, I was bullied, especially for being Asian American because I did look different. A lot of people would make fun of my eyes or my skin color. Or they'd make fun of my mom whenever she showed up to school events. So I just stuck to myself because if I was by myself, nobody can hurt me. When I was in college, when I finally discovered triathlon and then Ironman and watching the World Championships, I remember Chrissy Wellington and Miranda Carfrey and seeing them win Kona, and I was like, wow, that, that's really cool. Like, that's the life. It was this goal that I set out for myself. I was hooked instantly from there. It was the, the thrill of all three sports going on at the same time, and then just knowing that I could do hard things, and if I just put my mind to it, that I'd be able to accomplish a goal that I had. I was very surprised that she had the, the courage and the, the will and the, the, the determination and physical endurance to do all that. So I went to Kona initially hoping that I was going to get top 10 female um, amateur overall and that I would qualify for my pro card there. I touched down on Monday evening and that Tuesday I started becoming sick with an upper respiratory infection. I got to the race, I felt, I felt absolutely horrible, and then things fell apart really bad. What I learned at Kona is that, yeah, this is absolutely tough. It was a really, really difficult time for me. Clarice crossed the line in 11 hours, 27 minutes, and 44 seconds, finishing in 33rd place in the 25 to 29 female division. A pro card would have to wait. Just over a year later, at the 2020 edition of Ironman Florida, Clarice was once again in pursuit of a pro card. This time, not only did she get it, she won her age group in a time of 9 hours and 44 minutes flat. Right after I turned pro, I had the first ever Asian American female professional triathlete reach out to me. Her name is Jocelyn Wong. She's my mentor, because um, she's been in the same exact position that I have been. My mom is a teacher, and she had some students that were Asian American descent. And I come back home to New York, and, and she's like, can you hop on Zoom, please? The kids want to meet you. You're their role model. They look up to you. I'm teaching the little children, and they are the roots like Clarice when she was small. My wishes for Clarice and all the triathlon keep going, keep going.
hopefully you can change the world. What my coach did for me in 2019 was instill the belief in me. Like I, I am absolutely capable of doing really hard things and doing them well, but I've always been a helper. That's what my mom instilled in me when I was younger. Uh, it's, it's cultural for her too in the Filipino culture. You always help. So whenever I would go over friends' houses, I was always offering to do the dishes or, or do any chores and go above and beyond. It should come as no surprise that Clarice is passing on her knowledge to other triathletes through coaching. I could have done a lot better that day. I have athletes that race now and I get to see the results. So it doesn't matter if they PR, you know, that to me isn't the end goal. I just want them to go out there and to have fun, and just to believe in themselves. Like that's absolutely what I love about coaching. So I definitely think I'm, I'm very empathetic, but at the same time, uh, it's, it's all right, we need to get out the door because if you want to sit on the couch and mull that we're having a hard day, it's not going to make us feel any better. Besides being a pro triathlete and a coach, Clarice is also a recreation therapist, providing support to individuals dealing with substance abuse issues. A lot of people like to joke or give me slack and say, like, you're playing games as a living. A hundred percent I am, but it's so much more than that. It's realizing that we're, we're playing Monopoly to work on communication or, or team building or healthy competition. In the rain too, you got the like reflection that, yeah. on the bottom yeah, here. There are many milestone moments for any triathlete, and for Clarice, her maiden pro race is one of those defining milestones. It's my first pro race. It's finally here. Being able to be a part of the first ever Ironman Tulsa is really cool. How are you feeling? Good, good. I feel confident. Ish. <laughs> I didn't want to say that and then like, uh, that it turns out terrible, you know? And I start putting on my wetsuit next to people like Danielle Reese putting on hers, Sam Long. And so that was absolutely awesome. The cameras are starting to come out. Keystone Lake, part of Keystone State Park in Sand Springs, Oklahoma, is where the 2.4 mile swim takes place. The professional women will be the second group to get underway. But that cannon goes off and I was able to draft off of a few other pro women. Um, and I felt like I had a really, really strong swim. It was probably about 500 yards to the finish line that I started cramping up. My calves started cramping, my feet started cramping. I get out of the swim and despite feeling okay with my performance, I look and I'm the absolute last pro bike in transition. I was disheartened. It, the thoughts that I had through my head, like, can I be a pro? Do I belong in this field? I just thought to myself, no, you don't belong here. Look, this is, your bike is last. So the thoughts of Kona definitely left my mind. The 112-mile single-loop bike course takes athletes over the lush, rolling foothills of the Ozark Mountains, the toughest part taking place over the final 12 miles. Maybe about halfway throughout the bike that I found somebody else with a pee on their calf, and I realized, okay, I set out for my goal. I am passing one ponytail. Despite all of the things I couldn't control, such as weather or a, a technical road, I still was very, very strong and was really happy with my bike performance. The Ironman Tulsa Run starts at Oklahoma State University, Tulsa, before making its way through Tulsa's historic, vibrant downtown on its way to Route 66, where it connects to the River Park's trail system as athletes make their way back downtown to the finish line. Headed out of transition and started on the run and felt absolutely amazing. It was about mile 16 when I started cramping because I didn't have enough sodium in my system. I remember huffing and puffing and screaming at the universe asking why, like why am I cramping at this point? But, <laughs> but I was able to refocus and maybe that I would be able to get that Kona slot. And it's not over until you cross that finish line. Virginia, Clarice, you did it. You are an iron. It was tough. It was tough. I, uh, I just think about <laughs> all the little girls that have the same dream that I did. <laughs> Ooh, sorry, you can't stop crying. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> wow, that's a lot better than I thought it would go. <laughs> so I ended up crossing the finish line and I was the 11th female professional. And it wasn't until a little bit later after I finished that I realized I missed the slot by just one, one position. I was so close to getting that slot. So now that 
that thought is in the back of my mind. It's absolutely fueling my fire. And I am going to put it out into the universe that I am going to go back to the World Championships. But this time, I am going to go back as a professional triathlete.